and just speechless. Last time on True Magnum TV. This has been the most incredible hunt of my life. I've gotten three just incredible trophies. Very good job. Thank you, Fidelis. You know, I realize nobody's gonna give me the sign off to go on this hunt, but it's how I make my living. It's my livelihood. Hopefully this doesn't go down as one of those poor life choices. I'm not gonna shoot when the animal is facing me. You stop, he's coming. Yes. If he turns on. Yes, yes, you good. You can shoot Bo. In Tajikistan, Bo Morgan and his team are finally in position to get the ibex they need for further research in the area. After missing the big ibex yesterday, confidence is shot. You know, you replay in your head what went wrong. Am I going to do it again? You never really get a clear answer. There's always that lingering you don't know. Again. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Oh, yes, oh, yes. That's very good. That's what I'm talking about. That was not an easy shot. The compensated angle and pulling that all together and all the excitement there right before the shot. Book around, I pass. <laughs> shoot, no, you shoot. You have to shoot. No. <laughs> now all we have to do is figure out how to get up to him. Bo and the team must hike the rocky and steep mountainside over 200 yards to get a closer view of their work. All their conservation, all their, all you're watching. It's a big deal. They, See one hit the dirt. Gives, gives makes their makes their program strong. This program will give value to these animals past uh, food source. It turns it into a, a yearly program where you have employment all year protecting them, and then when clients come, you know, leading the hunt, knowing where the animals are, setting up the camps. So it's it turns it from just an animal you can casually see to something you can protect and pays your bills all year. Seven and one-fourth. And one-fourth, yeah. Mm -hmm. Collecting the information from this Ibex could open up opportunities to expand his Tajikistan program and promote new conservation efforts in the area. Collectively, all of our hunting that we know will be done in not very many years if we don't really concentrate on the conservation end and, and helping these people in the indigenous places. But we have a great start to a program here. It's going to take a lot of work. The communication's huge. we got to continue working on that, but it's going to be a nice little program. In Russia, extending from southeastern Europe to Asia, the Caucasus Mountains are home to what many serious mountain hunters consider the must-have trophy, Kubin Tur. Standing over three feet tall, the robust Kuban Tur has a chestnut-colored coat and a yellow underbelly. With the physique of a mountain goat, but the wariness of a whitetail, they are one of the world's most difficult species to hunt. Now, six months post-op, James Bryan has prepared his knee for the dangers that lie ahead in the mountain's unforgiving terrain. We just stopped, like these guys just don't mess around. We just pulled the cars in, gathering up the horses. We're gonna repack our stuff, leave down here what we don't need, pack a backpack. We're getting right after it, heading straight up into the mountains, just a handful of us. Riding on a horse with an injured knee can be bad for the rider, if not worse than hiking this environment. Any false move and the hunt is over and James could be back under the knife. Which one for me? This horse? Yes, yes. This hunt will be the ultimate test for me. 
simple things like mounting and dismounting, you know, just can't be taken for granted. Right. Obviously a big fall would be bad, but here there's a hundred little things that could be a hunt ender. James has just 10 days to get a tur on this hunt of a lifetime. A tur hunt is considered the brutal final exam for a sheep hunter. And uh, I have to admit, when I left Montana, I was pretty confident. And now I'm sitting here staring up at these Caucasus Mountains and, and questioning my sanity a little bit. Hopefully the knee holds out for the next 10 days, otherwise all that work I did in PT was for nothing. After a successful safari in Zimbabwe, Rob Dunham is on his next venture in the Central African country of Cameroon. Make no mistake about it, we're headed to the jungle. 100% uh, humidity, 90 degree temperatures, 70 at nighttime. I mean, thick, unbearable conditions. We're heading into it. This southeast portion of Cameroon where we're gonna be hunting has nothing going on. It borders the Congo on one side and then a national park. Highly inaccessible. It's actually called the last true wilderness. <laughs> but there is one, one special snake that you must watch. It is the uh, Gabon Piper. Gabon Piper. This snake is short one, thick, thick, and the head is like a triangle with a few horns. That thing is extremely poisonous. Okay. So generally, just avoid snakes. <laughs> oh, okay. advice that I can give you. Note, note to self, <laughs> avoid snakes. I can do that. Pedro is such a dear friend of mine. We've, we've known each other for years. And when Pedro invited me to come to Cameroon, I was really excited. I mean, he wanted a second opinion. You know, I do that myself when I open up a new area. I have James come along or someone, you know, just, just to get some ideas from another professional hunter. Uh, that along with, you know, me getting to hunt on the side was, uh, was the original intent of this whole expedition. Pedro's camp is currently an exploratory camp which they are hoping to open to the public in 2017 with top-of-the-line accommodations. Rob has come to help Pedro meet that deadline. I'm, I'm up for the adventure, man. I mean, this guy, I, mean I, I told you I want an adventure, and I think I'm, hope I didn't bite off more than I could just... <laughs> No, I cannot wait, I promise you, to see that thing. Yeah, it'll be exciting. It looks like. sure. Scouting and hunting is the only way to determine the viability for a new program in the area. But first, they have to make it to camp. Okay, what's the story now? <laughs> We're gonna get lose our light. This guy's in the middle of our road. Back in Russia, James Bryan and his hunting team have just reached the tree line in the Caucasus Mountains in their search for a trophy Cuban turf. Yeah, kill your knees, bat on the knees. If there's one thing I like the best about hunting, it's you know getting out in those truly wild places like this and just leaving the world behind. And looking around at this country, man, like this is the stuff you dream about. Some of my favorite places in the world look just like this. Two days ago, one of the flock got ate by a little bear, so we just ran across this lamb all by himself. I think they're gonna take him to find the rest of the flock. That's gonna be tough riding right there. People helping people, you know? This is a culture that definitely looks out for one another in the mountains. And it's a prime example of why Stalker Group's hunting program out here is working. It takes a community, and everybody benefits. Well, we've returned the lost sheep to his master, but we're asking for information on tour in return. Seems there may be a problem. This heat, it's almost 100 degrees down low. It's up in the 80s here, the tour have moved up high. So we got a little problem. We're gonna have to regroup a little bit.
In Cameroon, night has fallen in the jungle as Rob Dunham and his crew finally reach the exploratory camp. Look at this. This is like gorillas in the mist. <laughs> We're in gorilla, gorilla country. No shucks, I know. Well, it's been a heck of a long day, 13 hour a day. We stopped quite a bit in here, but I'm looking forward to seeing in detail the camp tomorrow. But most important, I'm looking forward to getting to something to eat today, didn't eat yesterday, and getting to bed. This, this camp is actually more than I expected, you know. Okay. You guys have done a great job. So let's, uh, let's grab a warm beer. <laughs> Something to eat today I want to eat. The two days it's, I haven't eaten. It's I'm been gonna, a long day. I'm going to eat and uh, I am done for the day. I'm going to wake up in the jungle. We never trust the airlines. We always have to check the, <laughs> the rifle. Oh yeah, no, I... You know it. I, uh, myself, I make my, my hunters do it consistently. Mm. And your confidence also for shooting. When yes. you know it's accurate, it's fine, yeah, then you shoot better. nicely. Absolutely. Yeah. Good. Rob takes the test shot on the camp's range to make sure his rifle hasn't been thrown out of calibration during his travel. Yeah. Let's have a look. Let's check it out. Check it out. Should be to the right. <laughs> you think? Well, let's, let's quickly check. I see. This is impossible. That is a big mess. So that would be grown. Just want to check one thing quickly. Uh, we shot and there's, there has been a few uh, shots on the target. So either we, we have a big miss and then we have serious trouble because of the airline uh, bumping the scope, throwing the box around, which happens lots. Um, or okay. we went right into the hole of the other okay. caliber. I mean, if the gun is off, then we, we have to fix it. If the gun is not off, then we have to make sure that we make a good shot. Otherwise, it's dangerous for we run into charging dwarf elef uh, elephants, oh, forest right. elephants, or buffalo. You have to be on. Yeah, just come. I'm going to lay right here. Yeah. So I'm going to take no the second shot, close yeah. range. Yeah because I, sure. I, I want to make sure I know where I am. But this is going to be the, the right shooting distance normally, so I mean, yeah. this is what you have, where you have to hit. Guys? Okay, let's see how that one went. I can see it from here on the right, right? It went in the ah, same hole. You see, it was shooting in the other hole, I told you. Yeah. But we already have. No, but I was worried that I missed the whole target the no, size man. of a school bus. It's huge, eh? <laughs> How no. are you gonna miss this thing? No, I, well, I was worried that the airline, you know, so now, you know, taking the close shot, I was so glad, it's bang on. But, but you, you see, this is a dangerous game. We cannot play again, so no. we must make 110% sure. I totally that everything agree. is totally agree. So are we ready for hunting? I'm ready. Let's go, friend. I cannot wait, eh? Let's go, get our Let's day go. started. Sure. True Magnum TV is brought to you by TrueMagnum.com. <laughs> In Russia, after getting news from the farmer that the tur have moved up due to the heat, the team decided to call it a night and get some rest, starting the hunt early in the morning. Our suspicions are confirmed. We got up this morning, we're camped up here about 9,000 feet, and it's just so hot. The prior days are so hot, it's pushed the tur up, up, up. So we're gonna get the, on the horses this morning, take them straight up to the top of that mountain and then footwork from there, so it's elevation day. In the Caucasus Mountains, the tur can live at over 18,000 feet. Most humans can climb to 8,000 feet with no problems, but once over the threshold, some risk developing altitude sickness, and if not treated, ultimately death. Altitude sickness is usually a pretty minor thing, but it can be deadly serious. To prevent it, you just need to slow down, gain your altitude gradually, 
that usually takes care of it. Sometimes though, you just, you're climbing a lot faster than you think, and normally that's when you're gonna have a problem. Moving rather quickly, the team ascends to over 10,000 feet. My knee feels pretty good, but we just crossed that 10,000 mark, which is where my lungs start working harder. I'm good at eight to nine. I can always tell when we've crossed 10. I'm definitely starting to feel the oxygen deprivation in the muscles. And this is exactly what the doctors warned me about. If I lose my balance here and even tweak my knee, it's over. After hours of hiking, the team reaches the ridge and possible turf just on the other side. These guys' eyes are so keen picking out a rock-colored rock animal in the rocks. He's going to sneak up there and just glass around before we crest this ridge. I'm just getting ready with a second clip. I never needed one, but these are sometimes very long shots. So just in case. There's a turn on this guy, right? I think it sees a turn. Well, they may be coming right towards us. Oh, shit. First tour that we've spotted here on the trip, way up in the high rocks. Around 60, group, around 60 of uh, tours, but all of them females. Now we uh, go to another place to see. Maybe we will find the rams. Yeah. If not, we will stay here and wait. Okay. Little spot. Yeah, that's what I love to do. That sounds like a fun day to me. We're gonna spend the day on this ridge spotting and glassing all the country. He spotted some females, which good sign. In this heat, males will move up above those females yet in the rocks to escape the heat and the bugs. Little spot. Yeah, that's what I love to do. That sounds like a fun day to me. Can't be a day above tree line with nothing to do but glass. Next time on True Magnum TV. Yeah, I got him he's, on. He's in the middle right now. Got him. Okay. He's behind the rock for me. White rock for me. I'm gonna have to move up a bit. These are some beautiful tur down below, and one of them is just exactly what we came for. Beginning of the fun part. Out of the gate. Here we go. Door pot, and we think we're all cocky, and we have to trek up and over a pass. It's instantly 4,000 feet. Welcome to the bigs. It went into some tremendously thick jungle, so they brought the dogs in. Yeah, the local, the